Good morning, everyone. I'm Mimi Lichtenstein, and today I am here with Rose Allen, and we are going to talk about 11 Experience, one of my favorite, luxurious, active, and adventurous companies in the travel industry. Rose, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Mimi. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to have you here because you guys have an ethos, a vibe, uh, you know, a way of doing business that is super appealing to me and many of my clients. And so I would love to hear from you. Maybe first you could tell us a little bit more about Eleven and then we can dive into two of the um, properties that we're going to talk about today. Okay, perfect. So um, Eleven is a really unique uh, kind of hotel brand, if you could even call us that. We don't actually identify as a hotel brand. We actually think of ourselves as a um, luxury experiential travel company. Um, and I think that that is an important aspect of understanding us um, because we are really so different from anyone else out there. So the kind of four key things to know um, about Eleven, what really is our kind of wrapped in our DNA across all of our lodges in the world, are that um, we are always going to be located in remote destinations that get our guests off the beaten path sometimes to a place they might not be able to go to otherwise because there's nothing else anywhere for miles. Um, our goal being that you don't see you know you don't see anyone else or you see far far fewer people than you might see in your typical travels. You maybe experience a, a special place in the world, um, et cetera. Number two would be our um, ad focus on adventure. And so I think the key thing here is that adventure means different things to different people, and we completely understand that. And so for some people, adventure might be going on a, a more challenging hike than they've ever done before, or maybe trying rock climbing for the first time. Um, and for others, the more adrenaline junkies, it might be uh, jumping in a helicopter and doing something that is totally out of the ordinary and maybe some people would consider crazy. So um, what we can do is create adventures, no matter what adventure means to you, which, which is pretty special. Um, we are also um, largely all inclusive, meaning, and our goal there is that you, from the moment you arrive on property to the moment you leave us, um, you're not worried about your wallet. You're not, uh, thinking about what things are going to cost. Everything's included. You can really sit back, relax, and not have to worry. And then um, last but not least, we customize everything, every aspect of the itinerary and the experience to the guests. Um, and so we do that through a process we call experience planning. We have a team of experience planners at all of our lodges, and they get to know the guests about starting about 30 days out from check-in um, and work together to put um, together an itinerary for that family or couple or group or celebration trip, whatever it might be, so that by the time you're packing and you're getting ready to leave your home to head our way, you know exactly what's in store um, and can get really excited and, and feel like you have kind of everything nailed down that you're excited about. I love it. Um, and I should also say, so I had the opportunity to experience an 11 uh, lodge myself when I went to Taylor River Lodge, I think back in February in Crested Butte, Colorado. Yeah. And so I worked with the experience planners. We had lots of amazing food, you know, experiences, active things, great guides, which we'll touch on a little bit too. Um, and I absolutely loved it. And I think the concept i believe it's your tagline maybe or your motto best day ever that, um, <laughs> yes. that people should feel that way at the end of the day and um i definitely did when i was there so i think you do a pretty good job of addressing that probably at each of the lodges just all in a different way yeah i think so too and it's kind of funny like it it feels so aspirational sometimes you're like how are we going to get every single person saying that but i think we really um kind of perfected this equation over time of the things I just talked about and, and some of the things you threw in there. Um, guides, you know, having having fun, spa, food, it really does actually have people often leaving the day being like, this was the best day ever, or leaving the trip saying this was our favorite family trip we've ever taken. We can't wait to book with you somewhere else in the world. And so I, one of the, I think my sort of proudest moments on a weekly basis is when people come back to us because they had such an amazing experience that they want to do it all over again. Yeah, 
and they have the opportunity to either go back to the same place or pick one of the other places. Yeah, that you go yeah exactly. <laughs> and, you know, I think it's rare in this niche market of the luxury travel industry to have this kind of diversity in the places that you have. Because some people, they're Four Seasons clients. So they want to go to Four Seasons, you know, no matter what the destination. And it's similar for you guys. If you go to Depler Farm and you absolutely love it and you're looking for a more tropical destination, you can do that. If you're looking for something in South America, you can do that. So it's really nice to have that consistent philosophy and that consistent experience in each of your places. Yeah, absolutely. And and just on a, a to build on that a little bit, um, for those who may not know, we, we have 10 lodges across the world. I can quickly list out, <clears throat> excuse me, where they're located. We have um, Cedar Lodge on South Island of New Zealand. We then hop to Europe. We have two chalets in the French Alps, right near the Italian border, um, Chalet Ibu and Chalet Pellerin. We have Deplar Farm in Iceland, which we're going to launch into in a minute. We have um now we're in the u.s no we're going to go to caribbean we have um bahama house on harbor island in the bahamas we then have three lodges in um in and around crested butte colorado we have scarp ridge lodge and soper's house in crested butte and then taylor river lodge right outside of town in, in almond colorado um we have a new heli ski operation in british columbia called kingfisher heli and last but not least we have rio Plana lodge in northern Patagonia, which we're also going to go into in more detail. But as you, you know, as you were saying, Mimi, you can really kind of like close your eyes and put your finger on a map and, and there's going to be a lodge somewhere within the vicinity of where your finger landed. And um, we're just continuing to, to grow our portfolio as well, which is really exciting. Awesome. OK, so before we dive into Depler Farm, one more question. Okay. Tell everybody a little bit about why um, you guys are called Eleven Experience. Sure. So it's a it's a pretty easy answer, and some people chuckle because they can't believe that is how. But basically, you know, we we have a um, an amp, let's say, or a dial that goes to ten, and a ten out of ten would be an amazing experience. I think we'd all agree. Um, but what we want to do is take things up a notch. We want to take everything to eleven, past ten to eleven. So um, our goal is that we're kind of challenging the sort of typical luxury experience or typical adventure or typical experiential lodge experience and and really taking it all up a notch in whatever way makes sense for that destination in the world and for the activities on offer and so i'll let you know how we're taking it to 11 at deplar and rio plana lodge excellent okay good background so let's talk about deplar let me pull up our pictures so first of all it's in iceland mm -hmm. and it's not in iceland where everybody else goes in iceland it's kind of it's very very northern iceland as you mentioned in a fairly remote location so um we'll flip through some pictures and you can share with us and i'll ask you some questions and let's okay. get everyone excited about about going to deplar okay awesome so I'll, I'll give you the high level so deplar um, Mimi mentioned is in northern Iceland. Um, it's in a region most people don't go to. We're, we're really the only kind of game up there right now. Um, the way that you would get there is you'd um, fly into Reykjavik and then um, fly on a domestic flight or you can fly privately as well up to an airport in the north called Accurary. It's also the name of a small city. From Accurary, we're about an hour and a half to two hour drive depending on the season and the weather. Um, it sounds like a trek. It's really not much of a trek and it's so worth it once you get up there. The drive is also really beautiful and ha you definitely like the, your, the anticipation is growing and growing as you get closer. And by the time you enter the valley we're located in, you honestly are kind of like your breath's taken away. Um, it's so, so stunning. Um, Deplar is kind of your ultimate, um, ultimate Lux adventure property. Um, so if you think about Iceland being an adventure, well, imagine you have this luxury lodge. It, it, it in and it of itself is a, has a total wow factor. It's absolutely, you know, architecturally stunning. Um, really, the amount of detail put into the design of the lodge and, and all kinds of little things is, is really quite remarkable. Um, but then you have this huge valley and, and the ocean and the mountains and, and incredible streams and rivers all around you that are like, your home base for kind of whatever adventure you've dreamt up with our experience planners during your stay. 
Um, so people come our way to spend time outside, to try new things, to experience Icelandic um, landscapes and culture and um, activities to luxuriate in our lodge. Our spa is is uh, absolutely incredible. Um, I, I I think there might be a photo or two and I could talk about it in a little more detail, but um, it's just kind of the ultimate Icelandic adventure destination. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it would be a pity for anyone who um, is really interested in experiencing all the best that Iceland has to offer to come up, to come up our way and not stay with us. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll talk about maybe at the end, combining it with other parts of Iceland, but right. For a lot of people, they're going to Iceland once in their life. Yeah. And so to be able to come beyond, you know, the area in the South where a lot of people go to all the way up to where you are and do both of those, I think would be perfectly dreamy. Yeah, absolutely. And then what about, um, we, we've shown, shown a couple pictures of both snow covered mountains and non snow covered mountains. Um, you guys are really a four season destination. Yes, we are. So we have three, um, key seasons. We, we definitely have four seasons, but we kind of refer to it as three seasons because we have our summer season, which would be June through the end of October. So it encompasses fall, you could say. Um, we then have our winter season, which begins in November and goes through mid-March. And then beginning in mid-March, we have our heli ski season. Um, and so what's awesome about this is that we're open pretty much year round. So whenever um, you're planning to come to Iceland, you can try to work us in. Uh, the key thing to keep in mind would be that that heli ski season is really all about heli skiing. So if you're not skiers, it might not be the best, it won't be the best fit for you. Um, but otherwise, the the focus of the summer and winter season is to, depending on the weather, and we're very good at, at rolling with weather and making sure that it doesn't mean, what bad weather doesn't mean a down day. It means a different adventure that we cook up for you. Um, but whether it's summer or winter, it's all about getting people outside to try new things. So um, in the summertime, like our activity list in general across all 11 lodges is is really long. Um, so it's impossible to touch on everything. But to give you an idea, in the summertime at Deplar, you might be um, going horseback riding and, and learning about the Icelandic horse breed, which is really unique and, and interesting. Um, you can surf. You can go whitewater rafting, um, e-biking, stand-up paddleboarding, kayaking, uh, hiking, destination yoga. There's really like the list kind of goes on and on. In the winter, it's going to be more, of course, like winter and snow focused activities, although it's worth noting that the snow doesn't really come until um, end of December. So so November and December um, might be less snow based activities and more of just enjoying the, the great outdoors and the perfect next slide on um, the northern lights. So think when you think of winter, think of snow activities, snowmobiling, skiing, um, like skiing at a local resort. Um, you can also actually still do horseback riding and surfing. Um, there's a lot of different um, day trips you can take. But but really, when you think winter, think Northern Lights. We are, um, you might not always think of Iceland as the best place for the Northern Lights, but actually given our location in Iceland in the north with very, very, very little light pollution, the Northern Lights are out of this world up there. And we had just incredible luck this past season um, with so many of our guests getting to experience them. Um, so that's worth keeping in mind. We've also designed the property so that you can actually take in the Northern Lights from many different places, making them even more special. So we have this massive outdoor pool that's heated so that no matter the weather, you can be in it and you won't be cold. And there's actually loungers built into the pool, like, like soft but concrete loungers built into the pool. So you can be laying in the pool after dinner, 10 p.m., um, maybe water or drink in your hand, whatever your preference is, looking up at the northern lights. And, and you know, you just can't imagine like what what cooler thing to to be doing while you watch them. That sounds absolutely amazing. So um, I never would have thought that you'd be sitting in a nice warm pool with a drink in your hand in the middle of winter in Iceland looking up at the northern lights. So I know it's pretty crazy. Good to know. And what is there a best time of year for the Northern Lights within the winter time? You know, the, the full winter season is really solid for Northern Lights viewing. The key thing to look out for is the full moon. 
So it's more like as, you know, and you can, you can of course look at that in advance, but if it's gonna be a full moon, um, it, it makes them, uh, they might still be there, but the human eye might not see them as well. Okay. Um, and so, but generally are starting in September, even the Northern lights start to start to be visible. Okay. Yeah. And I know for a lot of people that's on their bucket list. So this would be a great destination to go see it. Um, and then the atmosphere inside the lodge. One thing that I love, I don't think we have a picture of today, but I know it's consistent throughout some of your properties as well, is the Horseshoe Bar, which yes. they have at Taylor River. And I believe you also have one at Deppler Farm, right? Yes, we do. And and at um, Rio Plana Lodge as well. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, it seems to me the what I experienced at Taylor River was a really warm, inviting, casual place to hang out with other guests, meet other people, talk with the guides and the staff. And it's really a place where people come together and socialize after their adventures throughout the day. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say that um, I, com I completely agree with everything you've said. It's really, we intend our properties to feel more like homes than they do like hotels. And of course, you know, they're, of course it, it, provides the privacy that different guests staying in the same space together would want to have. Um, but our ethos is very much like make yourself right at home. So, you know, at Deplar, for example, um, people love the spa and, and at Deplar, it's worth noting, it's more the European definition of a spa. You know, you don't, you don't just have to have a treatment to go to the spa. Everyone goes to the spa of all ages, um, no matter, no matter what, what you'll find them in the spa. Um, and so people might come home from a day of activities. It's worth noting our, all of our activities are private guided. So each group has their own private guide. So you get that, you get that nice one-on-one -on -one time with your significant other or family or friends, whoever it might be um, during the day. And then you come back from your activity and you might be excited to share your adventure or story, or maybe you're excited to meet some, some like-minded travelers um, and so you might go back to your room, put on your robe and walk barefoot through the lodge to the spa. And that's totally acceptable and really um, how comfortable we want people to feel. So you'll see here, um, it's the architecture is lots of lots of glass windows. And that was done on purpose with views of either side of the valley. So whether you know, you're looking this way and you're seeing one side of the valley, you can you know, do a 180, look the other way and see the other side of the valley. And with the crazy weather we have up there, it's just so to be cozy inside and know you're in this safe building, but watching, you know, the snowstorm to a rainstorm to a beautiful sunset to the midnight sun, you know, just these this crazy weather change around you is really cool. It has the kind of Scandinavian influences. Um, it's all just kind of the best of the best of everything. So it feels very luxe and comfortable. Um, and yeah. And this picture, I believe, is of the spa yes. relaxation room, right? So just imagine putting yourself in that seat, you know, in the afternoon, perhaps after you went and did a big active hike or mountain biking or canyoning, and then you just spend the afternoon every day luxuriating in this spot, reading a book and having yes. a massage. Yes, exactly. And and behind the photographer would be um, the kind of bigger main area of the spa and just to touch on some of the elements mm -hmm. um indoor hot tub indoor pool where you can swim out and under into the outdoor pool um a large sauna with views of the valley uh a steam room outside of the spa near the pool we have what we call a viking sauna and that is a sauna built into a like kind of like a mound in covered in grass um, and next to it is a cold plunge. So there's a Viking ritual you can do that our team can brief you on and, and then leave you to do on your own, um, where you move between the sauna and the cold plunge. And, you know, it has all these kind of health benefits. And so people love to do that. But the spa is really like one of two, and I'll talk about the other one in a second, one of two kind of magnets on property. Like if you're not out and about enjoying all that the area has to offer. You're either in the spa or you're in this room, mm -hmm. the next slide that you had just pulled up. So this is um, the kind of main big living public area on property. Uh, you have in front of you the horseshoe bar that Mimi was commenting on. This is like a signature bar at 11 properties. It makes for great um, conversation because you are able to face people or sit next to people. 
um, and also chat with the bartender. Um, in this room, there's actually a lot more space than you can even really, you can tell it's a big room, but it's even bigger than it looks. Lots of different nooks and crannies for different um, groups to sit in. Behind the bar is a massive fireplace and huge living area that you, you know, 10 people could comfortably sit in. And then behind the photographer is foosball table, pool table, ping pong table, and above the photographer in a loft is actually an entire band setup. So if a family wants to go up there and start a family band, like that's that's fine. Um, sometimes people for celebration might bring in a local band. Um, it's really you you start sort of start to get the feel like meant to. It's we keep things fun. It's like you know find your own adventure. Like even if you're not adventuring outside, like come come have an adventure in the lodge. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I will say that we enjoyed many moments around the horseshoe bar at Taylor River. And I also did a different experience, but similar to the hot cold treatment, where I went with a yoga teacher into the hot tub inside of the beautiful pool, which I okay. loved in Taylor River. And then we went outside into the snow and laid in the snow for a period of time and then went back wow. into the hot tub <laughs> and did that multiple times. Nice. Um, she told me that it was healthy for me at the time. It didn't, you know, <laughs> it didn't feel like it, but I did it. And um, it was refreshing. Let's say that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so off property, you guys have, you have a lot of activities on property and then also off property. And this is a spectacular picture of people hiking. Potentially, was this a heli hiking excursion? Um, no, I don't think this is a heli hiking excursion. Okay. But um, we do have helicopters on property at Deplar in the heli ski season and the summer season, not in the winter season due to weather, um, which is just, you know, that would be an additional cost, but is a really cool thing to, to bring in the mix if you're looking to see things from up above or to get to some piece of land that might not be accessible otherwise. But it's, I think what, you know, even though this isn't a heli hiking photo, what it kind of shows you is like, you can do this sort of a hike without a heli. Yeah. Um, and and that makes it more accessible to more people. Um, yeah. It's absolutely stunning. And I will say, I'm always plugging helicopters because we yeah. had a lot of helicopters in Alaska last summer and um, we absolutely loved it. So I would say I would definitely want to do this hike, but maybe I would also find an excuse to take a helicopter up yeah. just to see the scenery. I mean, to see Iceland from above would be spectacular. Yeah. Um, so, so many options. And then mountain biking. Are you doing some of these? Do you go mountain biking from the lodge or are you going somewhere first and then going from there? Um, there's all different kinds of options. And the nice thing too, speaking of mountain biking, is that we have an entire fleet of e-bikes now on property that we own. Um, so if somebody in the group or the whole group is down for an adventure, but maybe doesn't want to exert so much physical energy that they're exhausted later. Um, we have e-bikes that we, of course, the guides can teach everyone how to safely use. And I personally don't know if I'll ever mountain bike again now that I've e-biked, just because you can do all the same things, but you have this button that is like, you know, I'm a little tired. I'm going to amp the power up a little, or oh, I want to work a bit harder in this section. So I'm going to turn the power down as far as it goes. Um, and so th th that's a really... Uh, awesome way for people to start to get comfortable on a bike if they haven't really done adventure biking before in the past. And, you know, I really, one of the reasons I love e-bikes for people is I work with a lot of families or multi-generational families and it equalizes everyone. So before, you know, two people might not have gone together because somebody could go so much further or faster. And now you can actually keep up and make, you know, you're on equal footing. Yeah, exactly. And, and really, I would say while we, you know, I touched on the fact that um, we can cater to adrenaline junkies. I'd say generally, 11 is welcoming families and couples and multi-gen families, um, groups of friends. And and yes, they'll, they'll always there might be someone in the group who's looking to really get after it. But gen generally, people are trying some of these things for the first time. Um, and so, just you know, always want to make sure people know that like we we can really tailor the itinerary and the experience to whatever people are looking for. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that because there are people, even within my family, who are a little bit more uh, willing to do things a little bit more over the top than others. So it's yeah. nice to be able to. And quite frankly, somebody can sit back in the lodge all day if they want to while everybody else is out and about if you are going with a multi-generational family and 
you know, grandma and grandpa aren't up for the, you know, three hour hike up the mountain. They can just chill at the lodge, getting a spa treatment or reading a book. Yeah. And we often recommend people actually buffer in at least a half day, if not a full day at the lodge, just because there's even thing simple, low angle activities you can do from the lodge, but the lodge is so special in its own right that people often kick themselves or give us the feedback. Like we really wish we'd stayed one more night. So we could have had some time just to lay in our room with a book or spend more time in the spa. Agreed. And then you also have some special um, spots, which I think you call outposts. Um, and this is an example of one of them. Tell us what those are used for. Sure. Yeah. So the outpost concept is a um, concept we have across all of our lodges. And in Iceland, I'd argue we have the, the most um, developed outpost offering there. So this mm -hmm. is the what we call the lake house. And it is a um, beautiful little cabin that we have bought and completely gut renovated. As you can see, you, you know, you'd feel like you're in a little extension of the lodge. Um, it's located on the lake on property where we can um, basically have guests like make it their home base for a half day or a day, depending upon what they're in the mood for, um, for uh, to facilitate activities on the lake. So things you can do on the lake would be um, fishing, kayaking, stand up paddle boarding, swimming if you're crazy or it's warm enough out to jump in the water. Um, and up at the lake house, we have a hot tub, a pool, a big porch with, with swings, um, and then this cozy interior, a little fire place. And so what we do is maybe we'd have people e-bike to the lake. It's, it's short, you know, maybe 20 minute e-bike. They get to get comfortable. Um, once we get there, get them set up with whatever activities they're in the mood for. And then when it's time for lunch, um, the chef actually comes here and prepares it. And it, so it's it's a beautiful set up lunch. Um, if it's cold out, you come inside, get cozy and get the nutrients and sustenance you need to make it through the afternoon. Um, and it's just, it's a way of facilitating um, more kind of special activities um, around our beautiful like place. Yeah. And just gives you another unique venue to go to. And it does look so cozy. I think this is, this has me thinking that people should actually go at least twice, unless you're a heli skier, go once in the summertime and then once in the wintertime. So you can experience the best of both. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and here's a great shot for winter. So this is more the heli skiing time. So as you mentioned, after March, um, I think impossible, you know, when we were in Alaska, the, the awe you have when surrounded by these types of mountains, um, and the vastness, right, is something that you can't even imagine what's that like, what it's like until, until you're there experiencing it. Yeah. And I would say, so, um, it's, I mean, people, our, our heli ski season is so popular and people really love it. Not so much because of the terrain necessarily, like the actual skiing, um, more so because of how special and different it is. And so for those of you who might watch this and say, oh, heli ski, I, I don't heli ski, I don't know how to do that. Actually, it's not difficult skiing. Intermediate skiers can do it. So this is an amazing place to try heli skiing for the first time. And the, and the reason it's so popular and the reason we have advanced skiers go do it is because you're skiing with views of the ocean. Um, you're skiing down a mountain and to the bottom where your tips of your skis touch the ocean. Um, you know, that's just it's just a very cool thing that you uh, the lucky people might get to do once in their life. Um, and so it's it's definitely for any anyone that loves to ski and wants to ski in a beautiful, special place in the world. Um, keep keep the heli ski season in mind for sure. OK. And it works equally well for snowboarders. Yeah, uh huh. The snowboarders are allowed to, because <laughs> okay. I have three snowboarders. So there's, yeah. I think, two properties in the U.S. They're not allowed to go to. So I was yeah. to make sure. um, and here's a great shot of um, one of the fish that was caught. I is this a salmon? Do you oh, know? I knew you were going to ask me what kind of fish that yeah. is. My team's going to kill me. I don't know what fish that is. I feel like it is. It looks familiar compared to what I've caught in Alaska. So we're just going to go with it. Okay. Salmon. Okay. okay. Um, um, yeah. More, okay. Got Sorry, sorry, Mimi. I was just going to say, um, for anyone who loves to fly fish, uh, we have some awesome fly fishing options at Deplar. The key thing to know is they need to be booked far in advance because the fishing is really heavily regulated for good reasons to preserve the fisheries. 
Um, and so if you, if, if any, anyone's ever interested or has clients who want to um, fish, let us know right away as soon as they send the first inquiry and, and we'll see if we have permits available. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Um, it's funny because when you and I talked about doing this show, at first we were going to touch on all of the lodges and yeah. then I thought, okay, there's no way we're going to get through it all. And so we narrowed it down to two and I'm looking at the time. I'm like, okay, we have to make it to Rio Palena. Otherwise we could probably yeah. talk about Deplar the entire time. Um, this is another example. And I think the spa, right? Some sound meditation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it's just the food, the food at Taylor river was amazing. And we had a cooking class from our chef who was there, which I think you all also offer, um, at Deplar, you will not go hungry. That's for sure. And you will be no. very well fed in a very, um, you know, farm to table, right? Like, yeah, fish that they caught that morning or the day before in a very healthy way. And then I think the other important thing to talk about for all of your lodges are the guides. You mentioned the experience, um, the experience managers. We had one of the guides we had for a cross country ski trip was Reed, who had just come back from Deplar Farm, which he absolutely loves being there. I think he had been there for a couple of months. So I love that you have your guides rotate around to different lodges. Yeah. Um, you know, you can see from this picture, these are fun people. They like to, you know, have fun and um, <laughs> and make sure everybody else is having fun. So it it definitely has a huge, it's a huge part of the connection and the experience that you have when you're there. Yeah, absolutely. I think you, you can't, you couldn't really say it better. I'll just, I'm, I'll try to just keep it really short and saying, I think there's so many things that make an 11 experience special but the guides are a really big part of it. And they're so passionate about sharing um, the destination and all we have to offer with our guests. And they, they're they just, they have that sort of innate ability to really connect with and get to know the guests so that they can tailor everything accordingly. So much so that you don't even notice they're switching up the plan or, or, or kind of like tailoring the hike to your ability level. Um, they just make you feel comfortable and at home. And I find most of the time um, when I leave a lodge, having gotten to experience uh, activities, I feel like that guide is a best friend. Uh, and, and I think a lot of our guests feel that way. And so sometimes I ask the guides, like, how do you keep up with all the people texting you photos of their family? And they love it. It's, it's like why they do what they do. So super special part of the experience. Yes, I would agree. I feel like, I mean, we obviously weren't at one of your lodges in Alaska because you guys don't have a lodge in Alaska <laughs> yet. Um, but we had a very similar experience last summer. And one of our guides who we adored had a baby after we left and we sent him like a baby gift and he yeah. sent us his baby announcement. And I feel like it's very easy for us as this is such a special, unique experience, we get attached to these people, <laughs> you know, maybe, yeah. you know, a year later, obviously, we're still thinking about them. And they might be, you know, have had a 1000, whatever, 100 guests by then, but they no. are really well trained and very, you know, engaging people. Yeah, and they, they somehow do actually like, remember their guests that I just don't know how they do it. But they genuinely care and keep in touch, which is so fun. Yes. Okay, so um, do you want to talk about real quick before we go to Rio Polena about pairing um, pairing Deplar with any particular places in the southern part of Iceland or somewhere else? Yeah, sure. So I just um, think that there are there's so much more to see in Iceland than where we are. I think for people that just have a short period of time and need to just kind of one and done it we definitely can offer a, a nice variety of activities and, and scenery, et cetera, and, and that we are a great standalone. But I think for people that have the time, I highly recommend connect, um, you know, creating a multi-stop itinerary through the country uh, with a few other lodges. And so I think personally that flying into Reykjavik, having a couple nights there, get over jet lag, have some food, explore the city. It's small. Um, but, you know, has a lot of character. So maybe one or two nights um, at, you know, there's a new addition Reykjavik that's opened. We also have a house in Reykjavik called Reykjavik House, four bedroom. Um, we that's available for booking as well. And it um, in a little beautiful residential neighborhood. You really feel like a local when you stay there because you are living amongst all the locals um, in this beautiful old house. So um, Reykjavik for a couple nights. Then I would suggest going south, kind of going to the um, Golden Circle. I think Torfus Retreat is a nice um, 
combine combination with Devlar because it's more focused on sort of some of those famous uh, scenes, some of those famous spots like Golfos and um, uh, you know, there's lots of different things to see down there. And then uh, like getting a feel for the Icelandic culture and um, having some good food, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Then move north, come stay at Deplar. So it's kind of like your soft landing. We, we were really caught up on rest and now we're ready for some adventure at Deplar. Um, so adventure, spa, food, guides, you know, all the things we've talked about. Um, and then before you leave, do like an overnight at the Blue Lagoon. Um, the retreat at the Blue Lagoon, which is then like a 20 minute drive to the airport. So in my, if I could choose my own adventure, I think that would be the circuit I would do. There's, there's definitely some other options out there, but um, I think that that makes for a really nice, like contrasting experiences throughout, like nothing is kind of competing with the other. It's all yeah. adding up to be a one big cool Icelandic experience. And there are so many places down in that southern area, you know, to go see that are those iconic waterfalls yeah. and the black sand beaches and snorkeling between the tectonic plates and dry suits and all that good stuff. So yeah. um, it would be easy. A lot of people go to Iceland, let's say for, you know, maybe like six days. But if you're going to come do that part, come up and see you guys, you want to have at least a good 10, 12, yeah. maybe. Yeah. 14 days, if we could push it. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. Well, let's talk about Rio Polena, okay. which we will have less time to talk about now, but that's okay because we got the whole history of 11 already. Um, so it's in Chile, fairly remote Chile, as you mentioned, Santiago's way up here. Rio Polena is way down here. Yeah. Um, give us some of the <laughs> highlights of Rio Polena. Okay. Um, so Rio Plana Lodge is our newest lodge in the portfolio. So it was initially opened in November of 2019. Unfortunately, COVID took us all down about four months later, depending upon where you were. And we closed down for COVID. You know, we had just opened, didn't make sense to, didn't make sense to stay open. So we've just reopened the lodge. It almost feels like the re-grand opening um, this past December. I can't believe it's been five months already. Um, and we are just so excited about this offering. So um, we're in located in Northern Patagonia. Um, so when you look at Patagonia on a map, we're kind of in like the very most Northern section near also the Lakes District or Lakes region. Um, the landscapes are super, I mean, it's like you have the Andes, you have these glacial lakes, you have glaciers, you have um, just incredible, just the most incredible breathtaking landscapes you've ever seen. We're in this new kind of up and coming ISEN region, which a lot of people are saying is the next frontier of, of Patagonia. Mm -hmm. um, what's so special is how remote we are. So we're definitely not easy to get to, and I can touch on how you get to us, but it's for the people that are, are open to a few more hours of travel um, to get to a place where you will be the only travelers for you know, hundreds of miles in any distance, in any direction, I mean. Um, we are small. The lodge is only seven rooms. Um, so it feels, I would say, even more so like a home than Deplar would, um, but is available for both buying out the whole lodge or booking it by the room. So it, it, can, it does operate like a hotel, not a home. Um, it is located right on the Rio Palena River. Um, in just the most beautiful location. Um, the only people you will see around our lodge are our neighbors who are local Chileans, um, you know, running their own farms and gardens or gauchos. And you see gauchos on horseback with their dogs kind of following, following along. We are all about getting people outside to experience this really special part of the world. Um, we have a helicopter on, well, let me back up one second. We have two seasons. We have a heli ski season, which is October and November. And then we have a summer season, which is December through the end of March. Um, so the property is only open from October through the end of March and then closes from March to October. Um, we have a helicopter on property. So in the heli ski season, of course, we're taking people heli skiing. Um, important to know that's for advanced skiers. It's kind of like the pinnacle of heli skiing in the world. So for people who have heli skied elsewhere and they want to really take it up a notch and experience heli skiing the Andes, 
Um, people are skiing what we call first descent. So the first people to ever ski a slope are skiing it and they can even name it if they want, which is a, a we can't guarantee this, but like we can try to make this happen. Um, the summer season, we have a helicopter on property as well. And every stay includes a helicopter assisted like adventure. And basically what that means is you're heli hiking, you're heliing to a glacier to stand up paddleboard. You are heliing to um, a special part of a river that's otherwise inaccessible to fly fish. Um, you can heli mountain bike. There's just the heli, you know, it's like you can already do all these awesome things, but why not start in a helicopter with an incredible 15 minute aerial ride over the region to access land or a place that hasn't been touched by a human in hundreds of years because you cannot physically get there by foot or by car. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just a really quite spectacular um, thing we have there because there's just no one around. The, the nature is just pristine and untouched and we intend to keep it that way. Um, and we're getting people out enjoying like this, this incredible place. Yeah. So for someone who lives in downtown Manhattan or Brooklyn, like you to yes. be able to go somewhere like this, that's the complete opposite of where you live probably. Right. Yes, very much. Um, so. And so for those people who are listening and not watching this next picture, I brought up because you mentioned the stand up paddle boarding. There are people paddle boarding on a river underneath or in an ice cave. Tell us about that. Yeah. So believe it or not, this is actually um, a glacial lake and that's a glacier above them. So um, for anyone that, that is, you know, making their way around the world and wanting to experience the unfortunate, um, you know, we're seeing the glaciers are receding everywhere. For people that want to really see these glaciers in Patagonia before they're gone someday, we have really a lot of options to do that. This glacier is called Martini Glacier, named after our lead guide in um, in Chile, whose name is Martini. Um, and uh, we, I mean, we're pioneering this area. There's no one else down there doing this. And so, um, you know, these people uh, might have been like two of the t 10 people to ever stand a paddleboard on this glacial lake. Amazing and so stunning. And glaciers, if you haven't seen them, are beyond cool. Um, we had some cocktails in Alaska that had glacier ice in them. Do you guys do that? No, no I, we haven't done that. Good idea. It's fun because glacial ice just looks different. You know, it's like crystal clear and so beautiful. And it was just like a big chunk. It looked like it just fell off, but I'm sure it was a piece that was floating around that they broke into pieces. Yeah. Um, and here's another example of the, you know, stunning beauty surrounding you when you go for a hike even. Yeah, this is called Los Condores. And basically the helicopter takes you about a 10 minute ride up on to the to what feels like the top of a mountain, but then you proceed to um, what we, what's called uh, like canyoning. You can canyon up the mountain, which means you're doing some hiking, some scrambling on all fours, and then sometimes you're clipping into a harness and doing little bits of rock climbing. Um, and you know that was my first. I did this particular hike and that was my first time doing the doing that and you know the guides make you feel so comfortable you you just sort of feel like what where am I and what is this incredible adventure I'm having you know we stopped have a picnic for lunch a few of the group were tired and wanted to rest after the picnic and the rest of us uh, ran up to the peak and got up to the very top super windy got some cool cool aerial views of the area and then made our way back to the helicopter and it was a full day full day adventure. I have taken my teenagers canyoning before and they love it. So, so you have teenagers. It's a very good activity. Um, and fishing is another property that's big on fishing. Um, I'm not going to try and identify this. Let's just go with this is a trout. I'm not sure yes. if it's or not. I'm pretty sure it's a trout. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's worth noting we have um, world-class fly fishing at this lodge. Um, and, and especially because the country was closed to tourists for – Mm. You know, a little over two years. Some of these fisheries haven't been touched by humans in wow. years. Um, and so they're, they're fishing really well. And it's worth noting that um, even people that maybe have never tried fly fishing, anyone can try. You can be a complete beginner. Our guides are magicians and somehow everyone always catches something. Um, and it's it can be really fun even for kids to, they make it very easy. And it's a it's a, there's a thrill that until you felt it, you don't know it uh, when you catch your first fish. 
I, I completely agree with you. And we all caught fish last year, fly fishing for the first time. So nice. um, I can attest to, yes, you can, with a little help from your guide, you can get it done. Um, so the culinary aspects of Rio Palena have some more unique quality than um, Deplar or some of the other ones, um, which is a little bit based in South America or South, yeah, South American Chilean tradition. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about um, this particular one that we're seeing here. Sure. So this is what we call, uh, this is a photo of what we call our asado zone. And so it's called our asado zone because there's a traditional kind of Chilean barbecue, if you will, called an asado. Um, and so for every guest that stays with us, we include um, an evening down at our asado zone. And so we try to group it um, so that, it, you know, all the guests are doing it together. Um, and we invite our entire team to attend as well. So and the majority of our team is Chilean. So it's like a, it's almost like a block party, except that the block, you know, the people, the attendees are our staff and our guests. And, and by this time, normally people have gotten to know their servers at breakfast and their maybe the housekeepers and their guides and the lodge, you know, managers. And so everyone's gathering around um, this feast. And so there's a bar, there's a little gaucho hut in the back right of that photo with, um, in case it starts raining, there's, you can go sit under there. There's ponchos, there's hats. Uh, there's a big fire where we normally roast a lamb. And then there is a, and this is a traditional, um, you know, gaucho, it's a gaucho tradition from the area. So it's, it's really a way to bring the culture of the region to our guests. Um, and then you do not fret for our um, vegetarians. We have a big grill going with all kinds of different veggies and then a whole bunch of, you know, delicious fresh side salads. Um, and it just is kind of like a big shared feast um, for everyone to partake in. There's live music. Um, you know, you, uh, in my experience, by the end of the asado, everyone's dancing together to live music. Um, you know, we were doing sing-alongs to songs in Spanish that no, none of us knew what was being sung, but you just, the, the Chilean people are so warm and welcoming and our staff especially is so just so excited, um, about this lodge and our guests. And so it's really quite a special, um, experience that's, that it's hard to explain, honestly. Um, Speaking to some of the other, we do lots of lunch picnics. So the, the slide before this was like, maybe you do a inflatable kayak down the Rio Palena and you end up at a, a beach where we have a big, um, nice little buffet lunch set up. And, you, you know, we'd set up chairs and have drinks and other things as well. Um, the next photo is of what we call Futa Camp, which is kind of like phase one development of an outpost in Rio, at, down at Rio Palena Lodge. So we'll be building some structures on this particular camp, but right now we use it for um, fishing or boating on the river, or you even can whitewater raft to this spot and get out and um, our guides can actually cook a meal over the fire for you. So different from a picnic, different kind of picnic, but um, uh, you know, cook a traditional Chilean meal over the fire and you enjoy it in these seats with, you know, blankets. And um, so, yeah, that it's a fun, really, that we have an incredible way of, of kind of weaving these cool, it's like experience on top of experience on top of experience to make for a really, uh, like, incredible memories. And I love that you have um, the Asada together with all of the staff, because I do think that after you spend days with these people, right, they do become, um, you know, like, friends and yeah. to be able to sort of hang out all on equal footing, enjoying each other's company and talking about all sorts of adventures you've been on and places you've been and learn about other ones um, is a really, really uh, fun experience for people in a place like this. Yeah. And I mean, sitting here next to an open fire out outdoors, you know, for everybody who's been a lot of people sort of locked up in their homes. Um, yeah. Some people very locked up in their communities or their towns because they haven't traveled much to be able to get outside, be active in the outdoors, have fresh air, be in these remote destinations is just, um, I think, what everybody needs. So you guys are doing so many great things all over the world. Thank you. Um, and I think um, it'll be fun to see, you know, how Eleven evolves over the next few years. If new properties come onto your portfolio, I'll be excited to hear about them. Yeah, definitely. Um, would you say actually before we before we wrap it up, Rio Palena? So, if you wanted to go to Patagonia, 
also. Yes. It would be um, a good pairing with Patagonia. You're already down there, right? You're already taking this big flight from the United States. Yeah. You might as well stay a while. So if they stayed at Rio Palena for a little while and then add on maybe down to Tierra del, um, del Paine. Um, yeah. And go W track, go for hikes down there. What do you think of that? Yeah, no, I think that we um, can definitely be a part of the more like traditional Chilean circuit. Um, I think we should be. And so I would say the reason for that is not just because we're awesome, but because the experience at Rio Palena, I think is a nice contrast to the experience at Torres del Paine. So in Torres del Paine, you know, you have these kind of iconic mountains or hikes or views, and I completely get people wanting to go see those. I, I, I do too. Um, but we are sort of like the the new player that is, so you go to Torres del Paine, you do these iconic things, you get your photos, um, you can say you went there, you know, you experience these places, but then come to Rio Plana Lodge and experience something that um, no one, like that's still so under the radar, a new region, like I said, um, pristine nature that has had no human anywhere near it for years. Um, not to mention the landscapes are different, the activities are different. We have the, you know, the helicopter on property. So maybe don't do, don't do your like helicopter add on down in Torres del Paine, do, do it up with us. And, um, you know, you're just, it's, we're really the pioneers of this new region. And I think that the like really discerning travelers who want to really experience Patagonia, like of course, Torres del Paine is going to give you an amazing Patagonian experience, but we're sort of like real Patagonia like Patagonia, you know, maybe Torres del Paine, however many years ago before, you know, there's a handful of luxury lodges. And um, uh, so I would say definitely keep us, keep us on your mind for these itineraries because uh, what we're doing is really, really special. And I think um, quite different from what the other like luxury adventure lodges are doing. But, and the good thing is you don't have to sacrifice um, a luxury experience because there are also some amazing properties down in Torres del Paine too. Absolutely. So. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Well, I think, you know, if you just put one lodge on your list for the next, you know, eight years, then you're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you so much, Mimi. Yeah. This was so fun, Rose. Love talking with you. And I look forward to sending lots of clients to your lodges in the future. And, um, I think all of us would be blessed to be at any one of them. So thank you all so right. much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks all right. We'll be, we'll be in touch. Okay.